Olami Olaren. Okay? Remember the name. Because they eviscerated Eric Adams on The Breakfast Club. I need to set the scene with the first clip. You commit a crime and you're rearrested, that you uh, that you bail can and will be set on you. So that's the first thing. Second of all, they have conducted multiple studies, but the Brennan Center literally just put out one. Less than 2% of anybody in New York City that's released on bail is arrest, rearrested for any violent crime. More importantly, in the same in the same breath that we want in the same breath that you want to sensationalize, <laughs> me want to highlight and point out, oh, an officer was killed the other day, which is a rare occurrence across the United States, but let alone in New York. New York police officers have killed at least seven people this year, including a 19-year-old. First of all, an NYPD officer killed a 19 year old in dismiss, Queens yesterday. I'm not going to dismiss the loss of a life of an innocent person that wears a uniform to protect us. But you us. do, of the, the rare, 31 people rare, dead at Rikers. A rare, a rare and the 19 year old killed yesterday. I, 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 I go visit those parents that lose their loved did ones you visit, of violence. Are you now, visiting you the that? family of the. Do you do that? First of all, yesterday I held a Rikers. I, I represented you hundreds of visit. You went to visit the family member of a slain officer? No, not the slain officer. Okay, of course you did. No, but what about the 19 year old that was killed yesterday by NYPD in Queens? When he called for help, have you said anything about that? Are you visiting them? Yeah, the, the, the. Mm. A bit, a bit, and so on. And so, uh, she goes for Olay. She goes by Olay for short, and she brings receipts. I don't even know she was looking at notes. Just off the top of her head. Okay. I like to show up sometimes like that when I do a debate. Because the candidates think, oh, this will be easy. She doesn't even have any notes. Show up here. I do, okay? With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. So anyway, New York based attorney, activist, political commentator, Ole has long been critical of New York Mayor Eric Adams, was able to call him out to his face on a public platform like the Breakfast Club. The 19 year old that Ole was referring to, when Rosario, NYPD cops fatally shot the teen in mental distress, who was wielding scissors inside his queen's home Wednesday after he called 911 on himself. His family now calling for justice over what they believe was a wrongful killing. Uh, but Ole wasn't done. Fear mongering was also top of mind. So let's take a look at that. There is a difference between perception and fact and how people feel about safety and the way people feel about the subways. And I think it's your own rhetoric about the subways that has a lot to do with why people feel scared, despite the fact that millions of people ride the subway every day without incident. But you've continued to fear monger about crime in the subways. You've added 2000 police officers, despite the fact that you've acknowledged that the subways are not that dangerous. And I think there is, you're right. And poor New Yorkers should not be the ones who bear the brunt of this, but they will if they already have the subway being turned into a place that they have to fear that there's a National Guard, that there's a hyper visibility of police, that they're trying to stop people with certain uh, records from even using them. And now you have this congestion price. So how do you reconcile that? Well, let's let's go before. Uh, first of all, I would love to give me, give me the quotes on my rhetoric because I'm, I'm lost on that. Can you give me the quotes? Oh, that you on fair monger yeah, about yeah, the subways? Yeah, give me oh, the- you've consistently done that since the day one of your administration. One of the first things you did was add a thousand officers to the subway because you claimed that the subways are unreasonable. Rideable, you and Hochul did this and said how dangerous it is. And you recently did that when you deployed the National Guard. If you are saying that New York is the safest city, it's one of the safest big cities in this country, which is true. And you're recognizing that the subway stations are, in fact, not half as dangerous as they're presented to be. I'm saying, how do you reconcile how your rhetoric has played into people's fear? Okay. About Mayor Adams, I'm not going to ask her any more follow up questions. It's not in his best interest. Don't ask her any more follow ups. Get in, get out. That's what I would have coached him to do. I wouldn't be working for him anyway, but somebody should have coached him. Don't ask her any more questions because she's going to keep going. How about stop and frisk? The federal monitor who is tasked with ensuring that NYPD is following the law conducted or under, conducted under an who? analysis. Came under who? Conducted an analysis that happened eight years ago, but they're still here monitoring <laughs> okay. what you're doing. And they said that you have brought back stop and frisk policies that are worse than they saw even during the Bloomberg era. But more importantly, they so analyzed sister, the neighborhood safety. Show me that. Show I could show you the, show, the report is available, and I know it's been available uh, to you because your spokesperson has commented yeah. on it. They did an analysis of over yeah, 10 precincts. You can't keep putting 10 out stuff different that's not precincts. Factual, that sister? is factual. There's a federal monitor reporting 
to Judge T. Swain on it and presenting and said what? the information. That be, since, they since said every... that, yes, listen, since, let me finish that... so you can peel it back. They conducted an analysis of 10 different precincts mm -hmm. and of every, of the stops of 10 different precincts, they found that 97% of them, by the way, of the neighborhood safety teams that were disbanded in 2020 because of their disproportionate abuse against black and Hispanic people that you revived, they analyzed 10 of those different neighborhood safety teams and found that they're conducting 97% of their stops on black and brown people and a quarter of them are unconstitutional. That's what the federal monitor said, not me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, she's on a roll, and so I need to moonwalk back. The advice I would have then given the mayor, Eric Adams, is just compliment her. Tell her how great she is, how smart she is, and how he could really use her in his administration. I can assure you that's not going to work, but it might have at least put her flat-footed, not on her heels, flat-footed for just a beat so you could catch your breath, just a beat. Uh, but he didn't do that. He was flustered. It sounds like she's the only one on the show. Where's Charlemagne? Where are these other people? They're apparently just eating danishes, taking a coffee break because she's got it, including about um, hmm, homeless encampments. All I know is when I came in office and I stated that I wanted to take, I'm not allowing people to sleep in tents on our streets. They're going to get the care that they deserve. The far left attack. No, we, we attacked you because you, you, you made it that so that people could be involuntarily committed. People, yes, invo listen, if I'm sitting down with you, brother, and I'm in a tent with you on encampment, and I'm seeing human waste in the corner, I'm seeing stale food, I'm seeing drug paraphernalia, and I'm hearing you talking about you only here until the spaceship comes to take you to your next planet. You need to be involuntarily committed. Didn't I just say about sensationalized kinds <laughs> this, of stories? No, this is what I saw. This is what I oh, saw. Yeah. This is what I saw. You were there? When I ran, when because I the went activists that were actually the there at the encampments you had torn down, you the weren't activists. there, but they were there when people they were being always, arrested. People are just last year, we paid out $150 million in settling uh, police uh, misconduct uh, right. from and NYPD, should, and, we, and that was double the number. Wrong. That's double the number in police yeah, misconduct since you became mayor. I bet Mayor Adams wishes he could have gotten on a space ship or something that the Jetsons used to ride and get the hell out of that studio. I did see Charlemagne, I'll apologize now. He wasn't eating a Danish or coffee, but he was letting the sister have a go at it. And why interrupt when <laughs> she's got it? No need for him to tap in, she's got it. Including about the migrant crisis. Other states are telling me, Eric, we will take the migrants and asylum seekers if they just allow them to work. We're not going to take them and just have them sit around every day. If they're allowed to work, we would take them. I, I the, agree the with you. The national government. She agrees with you. I agree her. with you that migrants she should be. A, a, she agree with a lot of stuff. Trust that, no, no. I trust train, you that I do not believe. She's on that train. I'm sitting here, off, Mayor Adams. She's going to be dialing 911. First of all, I ride the subway every day. I've worked right. as a public and defender in this city and represented thousands of people. So please spare me. No, I am not. Do you think more police make, make people feel safe, especially black yes. and brown no, people? No, they Phil, don't. Phil. No, black and brown people? Don't. Yes, brother. I oh, go my to, God. I, you got up and declared that we have this migrant crisis. And I thought it was er interesting, your earlier point about the difference between how Ukrainian migrants are being received versus uh, migrants, black and Latino migrants. Because, again, you gave a town hall where you were the one who gave this speech and, and incent like you incentivized New Yorkers to feel this way. You were the one who presented it to the city that you had to cut budget to cross because of the migrant crisis, even though recently. Recently, uh, you decided that you all actually do have the money to handle the migrant issue. That just wasn't publicized as much. No. So this goes back to sister, my original sister, discussion. You know, sister, you're an attorney, and you, I, I'm amazed. I think your art is, I'm just going to throw it out there and, and make people feel Mayor that Adams, way Mayor Adams, before you say it, there's an entire you know, council, a, listen, council sister, that knows your let line. Me, let me. See, what had happened was he forgot that you don't want to just keep going at it with a black woman. Not one who has her ducks in a row and her bags packed. It's finished. It's not going to work out for you. And you certainly don't want to talk about her to a black man in the room while she's sitting right there. Abort, abort. Because see, now you done made her mad. She's, and I can say this because I'm a proud black woman who is allowed to be angry. Now you made her mad. You're calling out her integrity, her character. So she has to hit you with perhaps what is the best argument, best for last, perhaps. What about the FBI raid on your office, Mayor? 
I went to the Southern border to understand the problem. I remember, I remember you started that yeah, tour yeah. before you were going to go to go DC, yeah. and uh, when you were going to go to DC to buy to talk to Joe Biden about the migrant crisis, but you were stopped because they had the FBI had to take your phones. Good Lord, you just make up stuff. Did I make that up? That's yes. it, that's reported. Sister, the FBI sister, didn't seize your phones. Sister, the FBI didn't seize your phones. No, but they didn't you, investigate no, your top you aides. That's what, not happening. What did you to understand? I want you to understand the hypocrisy mm. of people when. The law enforcement does something every day. It's bad. But when they do something against Eric Adams, oh, it's good. <laughs> you know, come no, on. Let's I, didn't say, I said what happened. Okay. I didn't say that it was good. I, well, I don't think it's I good that our mayor is being investigated came, for illegal I campaigns. Came, I don't think that's I good. Came. Even I know your phone was taken, mayor, and they, they were looking into some folks about some things and money. Perhaps at the root of it. Um, Jackson, did I have to play so many clips? Did I have to give so many embarrassing examples? Yes, because it's fun to do and it's enlightening. Do you, and I do wanna hear what you have to say about all of it, including overall the mayor. But first I want you to answer this question. Do you believe Mayor Eric Adams was looking around hoping that the Sandman, would get him out of there and yank him off the set. Think, the Sandman made somebody. Um, I mean, there's there's so much to say about this. First and foremost, overall, I don't think it was a very productive conversation, and it's mostly because of Eric Adams. And he, most importantly, people really don't like him. And, and, and so, you know, just the way that Eric Adams has handled his administration in his term hasn't really been well liked. It's he's kind of a strange guy. He's not that personable and he came into office right after um the pandemic. So, you know, it, the world in New York wasn't really all that privy necessarily to who he was and he's a cop at the end of the day. Um now I think that what's important to point out is that um Ole was 100% correct in that Issues like crime get blown out of proportion, like they'll make it seem like, oh, it's just it. everyone's dealing with this. When, in fact, it could be an issue that's growing a little bit that does need to be addressed. But that doesn't make it more important than things like the price of rent, um, how much people are getting in wages, how much access people have to different types of programs or benefits. That's going to be more important than the fear mongering aspect. Now, on the other end, I think that one thing that the progressive community, and I'm not really speaking about Olay because th this whole clip really was just her just eviscerating Eric Adams. But one of my critiques on the progressive community is like, well, what we'll do a lot of the time is we'll be like, oh, in fact, crime is not a problem at all. Although the, the, it, it does not, nah, it is a problem and it does matter. But the issue is when you use it to fear monger and make it like this is the biggest issue that we're facing. And it isn't. You know, so how are we going to tackle homelessness? How are we going to tackle crime? How mm -hmm. can we stop recidivism? Mm -hmm. That's how we have the productive conversation. Yeah. But overall, Eric Adams is just not a good mayor. And I don't yeah. think he he probably won't uh, get a second term. Um, but uh, yeah, he's he just sucks at his job at the end of the day. And, and yeah. she tore his head off because he sucks at his job. She did, and, and you make important points here. First of all, he never had a mandate because look at it, okay? De Blasio's leaving and about 18 people, okay? Maybe half a dozen, maybe it was 10, I don't remember. Tons of people started running and then it's like, you know, he got maybe 50 votes and he won. Again, it's an exaggeration, but you understand mm -hmm. when there's six people <laughs> running, there's no mandate. But this guy's it, the former cop who says he was beaten within an inch of his life, and so he gets it, and he understands, and he'll hold law enforcement accountable. Uh, yeah, right, Jackson's right when he talks about proportions and fear mongering. I wanna hit you with this though. This black mayor is also facing, I suspect, what a lot of black mayors face. They have to be, quote, outwardly tough on crime, because big business in cities here in Atlanta, Buckhead, let's say, demands it. And here comes Cop City because of it. Cities will not attract business. Business will not back politicians, black ones, 
unless they do their bidding on crime. They want to feel safe, even if it's just window dressing. You will do this, or you won't stay in power. Adams may be out anyway, Jackson, but do you think that he's perhaps facing some of that? Oh yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, um, what the, the the factions that got him in there, or um, you know, just a law enforcement in general. So he's just being himself. He's just he he's just answering to the people who support him, which unfortunately really is not the majority and it's not the public. But yeah, no, I think he's just answering uh, to people he needs to answer to, like you said. I don't know that he'll be visiting the Breakfast Club. Again, <laughs> probably not. When Ole's there, probably yeah, feels no, a little that, set up by not. Charlemagne. That, that was rough. Uh, that was that rough. Was it rough. was like, oh. But hey, oh Charlemagne gave plenty of room for him to defend himself if he could. I I understand we edited the clips, but this uh, well, hey, uh, sister, it's just he's uh, always like that. It's just not. Yeah, stop calling me sister, by the way. So I'm not your sister. We're having this conversation. All right, so we'll keep tabs on Mayor Adams uh, for the rest of his term. And if he gets a second term, 